Hello everybody, this is Philip from uh, Java 1 1504. This is our week 4 project video, the connected application. This week we're doing my application with the random user API, which allows us to return a random user, go figure, um, whenever we click a button. We have the ability to pull, as we can see here, a single random user by just clicking on get random user. Or if we rotate landscape, makes it kind of nice. We have the ability to pull by default five random users that we can choose and take their details out as well. We do have the ability to accept text entry from the users, for example. If they only want three items returned, they can get three individual users returned. We do have the ability to handle network connectivity problems here. We go ahead and put it on uh, airplane mode. There we go. We have no connectivity, so voila. We do have the ability to recover from that as well. Voila, we can now recover from that. So the way the application works is very simple. allows you to pull up all the information that you need, and there you go. The really cool thing about it is, is it is structured efficiently. We actually have several different classes other than our main random user class right here. This is our user class that allows us to specify custom users based on a JSON return from our objects in the API. We also have a custom user adapter, which allows us to create those nifty, nifty little list view uh, windows there. We have our connectivity class, which allows us to handle all of our connectivity issues. And we have our async image setter here, which allows us to set our image uh, views based on an image URL that is returned from the API asynchronously so it doesn't block. One of the things that we had to do is make sure that it's all structured efficiently, which it is. Um, we have the primary class up here being the random user. Uh, when it launches, it checks if we're online and then it gets the user. Checking online makes sure quite simply that we are connected to the internet. If we are not, it hides our elements. If we are, it doesn't hide them and it basically returns the status. Hiding the elements is simple. It hides only what we need to hide and that it also adds the network connectivity um, child view, that little RU bot that you saw when we lost the connectivity to the screen or it removes it therein. From there, the application is very simple. It uses the built-in API that I created here. Public class uh, get API async. This is right here. Um, as soon as we do a pre-launch, we load up a progress bar and we show that. And then in the background, we're going out and we're pulling our JSON data from the server. We're loading up to a JSON object and um, we're also handling cancels gracefully here. When it finishes executing, we close the progress bar. We parse through the JSON data, whether it's an individual item in an array or a bunch of items in the array, it doesn't matter because we handle that all using one class. And then what we're going to do is um, set all of our information appropriately, fill out our adapter views, and we're basically done. The cool thing behind this is that the single class actually controls one single population method, which is called populate UI controls. As you can see, it has an int position here. The cool thing about our API is it returns an array of objects, even just for one item, so we can do this. Um, whenever we return one item, it just sets it for zero. If we return multiple items, we can set it for the given position. It works quite nicely. Um, as you can see, we are pulling tons of information out from the JSON array. Um, we are actually controlling how they're laid out as well. We do actually control also a custom date time format for the birth date too, as that's turned in a uh, Unix epoch. So that works out quite nicely too. One more thing was we had to show that we can accept user input. When we click on get user, it checks if we're online. If not, it kicks us out. And then it starts checking to see if we've filled out that box correctly. And if not, it defaults to five. And then it builds with a custom build URL method using the URI builder, using our base uh, API key and the base path right here. It can build for a single object or build for multiple objects being returned from the server. It then returns that single URL string and executes the API call. I think it works quite nicely and it sucks that it's late, but that is life. I hope you guys have a great day.